back to Love Your Food. This week we have a very simple basic recipe for you. This is our recipe for pie crust. Um, going to be very similar to I'm sure a lot of your recipes for pie crust that you've seen. Uh, just a very simple basic recipe but uh, we wanted to do this one before we did our pumpkin pie next week so you can think of this as sort of a teaser. Uh, but here we go. So we've got uh, salted butter, we have vegetable shortening, you can also use lard, uh, a little bit of salt, a tiny bit of vinegar, a little bit of baking soda, some water, and some flour. We're using all-purpose flour for this. You don't want to get uh, too much gluten production in here. So first we're going to combine all of our dry ingredients. So the flour, the salt, and the baking powder uh, all go together. And we're just going to mix those all together. You want to make sure these are well combined. We have this uh, pastry knife, which is very helpful when you're making pie crust. So once those are well combined, uh, everything's mixed well together, we're going to measure out our uh, our fats here. So we have, um, this is the butter here, we're just going to start with this. And we're looking for uh, 250 grams. We've got our handy kitchen scale here. And we're trying to make this as accurate as we possibly can. You can just add little slivers of butter on there until you get up to the magic number. And there we go. We are at 250 now. So that's going to go into our bowl with the flour and our other dry ingredients. And then we're going to do exactly the same with the shortening. So this is going to be, again, 250 grams. There are some other methods of making pie crust that use um, different proportions of the two kinds of fats. Uh, or even uh, more of uh, exclusively one or the other. Uh, we like the mix, it just works a little bit better. We find it's uh, a little easier. So once again, uh, as with the butter, we're going to make sure that we're right up at 250. And there we go. So just make uh, your final adjustments on there and get your uh, fats into the flour. And then we're just going to uh, cut this with our uh, pastry knife here. This is not the easiest way to do this. It would have been far easier to cut this into small pieces first, then add it to the flour, and then start going with the pastry knife. But uh, this is how... <laughs> We ended up doing it. Now you remember, you do want to start with cold fats. The uh, butter and shortening should be from the fridge. You do want to make sure that they are good and cold and stiff when you start working with them. And it's important that we don't overwork it. So with the pastry knife, we're just going to cut the uh, fat into the flour until we get to sort of this um, pea-sized mix here and then we're gonna go in with our hands. Once it's at the pea size, uh, the pastry knife doesn't do much good, so you have to go in with your hands. Now, careful, you don't wanna do this for too long uh, because you don't wanna melt the fat, you don't want it to sort of warm up enough that it melts, but you'll sort of see all at once, once you've mixed it enough, it's gonna be that cornmeal texture and those big lumps are not going to be lumps of fat anymore, they are going to be just um, sort of boulders of crumbled, fat and uh, it's all going to have the same sort of uh, grainy uh, cornmeal texture. And once you're at that cornmeal texture, you don't want to go any further. You want to make sure that you're not overworking this. You don't want to encourage any gluten to form and you don't want to melt the fat. So once you're at that stage, we're going to add, we were just under 250 milliliters for the water and we're going to add the vinegar, which is going to top that off. So the total amount of liquid between the water and the vinegar is 250 mils. All of the amounts are going to be in the description below as usual. And then we're going to add that to our, uh, our dry mix here, our mix of the uh, dry ingredients with our fats. And once again, with the pastry knife, we're just going to cut that together. The other nice thing about the pastry knife is it discourages uh, gluten formation because you're cutting. It sort of cuts those long gluten strands and um, 
you end up with a dough looking a little bit like this. So you want to get all of the bits off of the side. And then once you're at this texture, this is pretty much where you want it to be. Um, you, again, you don't want to overwork it. You don't want to encourage too much gluten to form because um, that will make your pie crust a little chewier, uh, not quite as nice. It won't be as flaky. So without kneading it too much, you do want to make sure that you have incorporated all of those little flakes and, and that sort of thing that are on the outside of your dough. Um, you don't want to fold it over and knead it like a, like a bread but you just want to kind of make sure it's all pressed together into, uh, into a single pretty uniform uh, uh, piece of dough. And from there we're going to divide this. This is a pretty large recipe. This is probably enough for four pies covered. Um, so at this point we are going to divide it up so that we can store it because storing it in one lump is not all that useful. Uh, having it in individual pie sizes is much more useful, so you see Chef Caleb here dividing the uh, dough in first in half, and then in half again. So it's pretty easy just to eyeball this. Each one of these dough balls is probably enough for a covered pie. And remember, the bottom of the pie is going to require more dough than the top because uh, it has to fill the entire... Um, shape of the uh, the pie tin that you're using, whatever that is. So once you've got everything divided up here, here's Chef Caleb just dividing the last little piece up here, and it's, it's fine to uh, tear little pieces off of one if you feel like one's a little scant. You can definitely use a little piece from another one. Make sure you're getting all those little bits of dough uh, stuck together. And uh, try to resist the urge to knead it too, too much at this point. And that's, uh, that's divided up, so that's four pies right there. Now we're going to put this in the fridge. So we're going to wrap this up in uh, just regular cellophane wrap. So just regular plastic wrap, very, very simple. This is going to go in the fridge uh, if you're going to use it today. If you're not going to use it today, you can keep this in the freezer very, very easily. So after it's cooled, you've got those fats back to uh, fridge temperature. It's nice and uh, firm, and uh, you've got that good texture again. We're going to get our pastry board out and our rolling pin. So a uh, good amount of flour on the pastry board, and we are just going to uh, get our dough onto the board. Now this is for our pumpkin pie, which is not a covered pie, and we it is a very uh, wet mixture, so we're going to give a little extra thickness at the bottom. We're just going to roll this out. And you are welcome to go to whatever thickness you really, really want for uh, for your pie crust. Um, again, this is probably enough if you're if you roll it a little thinner than what we've done here. This is probably enough for you to uh, to do a, um, a bottom and a top on a pie but we wanted to give a little bit more of a, a little bit more crust for the quite wet pumpkin mixture and you're going to see that in the recipe next week so once it's the right size you want to make sure that it's going to completely fill your pie crust and important note here you don't want to stretch it down into the corners you really want to make sure it just sinks down into the corners and that you push it down a little bit gently without stretching those sides you don't want to have little thin spots that will burn or uh, potentially break when you cut the pie. Uh, just very, very gently push the uh, the corner, the crust into the corners of your pie tin without stretching it, uh, and hopefully without um, squishing it down too much. Now you don't need to um, line your pie tin. There are some recipes that call for oil, but it's not required. Then you can trim the corners off. Uh, any excess that comes off, you're going to just trim that off with a regular, uh, just a regular bread knife or a butter knife. Or if you have a pastry knife, you can do that as well. And then you can use these scraps uh, to fill in any gaps along the outside, which Chef Gale is going to use here.
So any little cracks or gaps, you're just going to uh, fill that in with your pastry. And then uh, for this, uh, because we're not doing a covered pie, this is a pumpkin pie, it's not covered, we're going to crimp the sides before we bake it, uh, or before we fill it. Now, for a filled pie that has a lid, you're going to do this crimping maneuver after you've put the lid on. So you're going to just cover it, you're going to do the crimp, make sure it's all well sealed, and then cut some nice, uh, some nice holes in the top. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So uh, you can see a little shot of our pie crust uh, here in action with the pumpkin pie. We're going to be doing this recipe for you next week and uh, just in time for Thanksgiving. But uh, if you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any, any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food. Thank you.